We are here because we're here to meet Bishop Paul on Royal Children's Day because it's important that the church listens to our thoughts and ideas. Do you think it's important to listen to children on World Children's Day? I do. And not only on World Children's Day, but every day. Are you going to make the church an eco family? Think about that. There's, there's, there's big things you can do and little things you can do. There's things that you can do in your own life and there's things you can do to try and get the whole world to be more eco-friendly. So we try and do both those things. So when it comes to making the church an eco-friendly place in, in a small way, then there's all kinds of stuff that go towards eco-church, like are you recycling things? Are you using uh, proper cups instead of using paper cups. What are you doing with plastic? Are you are you trying not to use plastic as much as you can? So here in this house, when I was a child, we used to get our milk. It always used to come in glass bottles. And then for years, milk came in great big plastic tubs. But now here in this house, we've asked our milkman to come and, and bring us glass bottles again. Because then when you've used them, you can pull them out and they'll be recycled. You can recycle things in lots of little ways, but also you can be a real voice speaking out for sustainability of creation. And that's where children's voices come in. Bishop Paul, you want all our churches to be eco-friendly and it's really important. What are you doing to help? Are you eco-friendly in your house and lifestyle? Yesterday we had a special meeting down in Liverpool uh, which was about global warming and this house and the chapel upstairs we've just applied for uh, an eco award, an eco church award for this house and we've got a silver award and we're going to try and do our best to get a gold award uh, for the house and the chapel. Because there's a chapel upstairs we count as a church so we can get special silver eco church awards so we're very proud of that. Our oceans are full of plastic and waste, which is harmful to sea life. I want to ask you, what is the church doing on a day-to-day -day basis to reduce plastic waste? That's a great question. So, we're saying to people, like I said a minute ago, if you're, if, if, because sometimes at the back of church, everybody has a cup of coffee. And, and in the past, it's always been easier just to give out plastic cups, because then you don't have to wash them up, you can just throw them away. But now we're saying to people, think before you do that. Because what's going to happen to those plastic cups? They'll just be thrown away. Like sometimes you get milk, and milk comes in these tiny little plastic cartons, and every one of those gets thrown away. So, so what we're saying is we've got in the habit of using lots and lots of plastic all over the place, especially in churches, like things at the back of church and so on. Can we just think again about that? And then when, when, when people do use plastic or anything else, we want to say to people, make sure that you recycle it. And that's the thing about eco-church. If you've got proper recycling facility, then so for example, here in this, here in this room, if everybody looks where I'm pointing, there's, the, there's a thing just next to Nicola that says shred it. And we put our papers in there when we finish with paperwork. And then a guy comes and shreds it all up with a great big shredding machine. And then it all goes to be recycled so that we're not wasting stuff. The main thing we've got to do about plastic is not throw any away. As there is an increase in people becoming vegan and vegetarian, how does the church propose to support farmers who will undoubtedly be affected by a decrease, decrease in sales when their family's livelihood is bound to be affected? You're talking about livestock farmers who've got sheep or cattle in their farms. What's going to happen if nobody wants to use those for, for food? A, a, across the world, the, 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 eating animals is, is the least um, uh, effective way of getting your food protein. So more and more in the Amazon, they're, they're chopping down enormous amounts of forest. Why? So that, so that they can turn it into uh, uh, places where uh, uh, food is soy food and other food is grown. Uh, what happens to that food? It's fed to animals. So tons of food is fed to animals, but only pounds of meat comes out of that. So it's a huge waste overall. And all those farmers who are growing the soya or, or whatever, if, if they would grow food that people can eat, well, well then hopefully they would be helped more. But there is no doubt that there are some people 
hill farmers farming sheep or, 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 or uh, livestock farmers farming cattle who, who might have to change their lifestyles if, if the demand for food goes down. So we've always got to be careful to make sure that the things we want can be made by people who are not going to go bankrupt just for helping us with that. And I think with most farms, if, if they needed to, if everybody went vegan, they'd be able to switch over and grow different kinds of food. And how can the church help to support them? So, the, so the, the, there's two things we can do. Uh, uh, much as I said about churches generally, individual Christians is the same thing. F for a start, you ask yourself the question, if, if God wants me to preserve the world going forward, what lifestyle changes do I need to make? Do I need to eat less meat? Maybe, maybe not no meat, maybe just meat two or three times a week instead of every single day. Individual personal choices. Then there's advocacy choices. So can the church get a petition together and everybody signs it and we can and we can write to our local member of parliament to say, what are you doing about that government-wise? So again, it's little tiny things about personal lifestyle choice and big things about making advocacy decisions to try and persuade governments to change their minds. And the church can be involved in both of those things. How long will God's world survive if we do nothing? Not very long. If we don't change quickly, time will run out for us. If global warming keeps on going and the sea levels rise, in my generation, these things may not happen, although they might, but in your generation, they will. That's why children's voices are so important to listen to. The Mini MU challenges you. What one change can you make in your life to make a difference?